So tell us what would on fibrocystic breast, you mentioned your personal story. Um, how would breast thermography look at, I don't want to use the word diagnose. Right. How would it look at fibrocystic breast different than a mammogram? Well, I mean, looking at it, we're looking at the, the whole view. And one thing that, that is way different, and this is the only test that can actually do this, which is priceless technology, is, you know, because it is um, a physiological test, this is the only test that can measure the effects of estrogen on the breasts. And, I mean, if you know anything about cancer and you know anything about women's health or just health in general, you know, your, your further exposure, your length of time that you're exposed to estrogen increases your risk of potential cancers later. So what we're able to see is that effect of the estrogen going on on the breast tissue. And so with that fibrocystic, um, if, you know, if you do have a fibrocystic diagnosis, um, what we're able to see is how stable is that? And is there a hormonal effect going on? Um, we can't see, if, if you ever hear someone say, you know, I can see the cyst in your thermogram, that's just not true. Um, a lot of people don't understand the laws of thermal dy dynamics. Um, you know, cyst is, it ends up being the same temperature as the rest of your body because it's fluid generally, right? So unless there's something underlying, you know, something anatomical underlying, you won't really see like a heat presentation there. But with the breast tissue, we can see that estrogen effect. So, I mean, to answer your question, you know, the biggest thing is to monitor the stability. So if someone, and we grade it in, in the, a TH rating, TH rating from one to five, one being normal vasculature, normal heat presentation on both, uh, you know, bilateral breast uh, expressions, or, you know, five being very abnormal, meaning one breast is really on fire, really, I mean, you could probably notice in the room that it, something's wrong. So... With the um, fibrocystic breast disease, a lot of times, and we we are really in a situation of a epidemic of TH3s, TH3 ratings, and that's basically, you know, um, a watchful, questionable spot where people are. Is and that's you know you got a little bit going on on more than one side. You you have a lot of you know avascular heat presentation. Um, I mean, asymmetrical vascular presentation. So I think just monitoring, like for myself, um, I had mine done just a couple weeks ago because it's been a while. And um, so, to, and I ended up in that TH3 range. So from there, you know, and, and there are cancers in that range that we can't necessarily always uh, detect, you know. So once you're in that TH3 range, we always recommend follow-up imaging. So, you know, and that's between you and your provider, whatever you choose to do. But um, like for me, for my referrals to my patients, I refer them straight to ultrasound. And then from there, they can go have, you know, further testing if they so choose to. Um you know, and that's totally up to them. And then we ask them to come back in about six months for the TH3s. TH3 is six months. If you're at a TH1, TH2, it's like every year. If you're in a TH4, TH5, we want you every three months. We want to watch how stable that is. And especially if you do have an estrogen um, effect going on, you know, and that's separate from the TH rating. We're able to say, you know, a specific testing was done to see if the effects of estrogen are, you know, seen. And that's either a yes or a no. And in my opinion, um, I think it's a little bit uh, more optimistic when we do have an estrogen effect going on with the TH3 or a TH4 because we have something to work with. 